Yes. And so going back to what we're talking about, knowledge is power, power to act. If we look at, at, at the way this thing has, has, um, has played out, let me draw you another diagram because I think it's, again, it's important for you to think about these things. I'm not telling you you're right or that you're wrong if you have a certain viewpoint or if you have a certain opinion, but I want you to think about these things intelligently so that if you're a critical thinker, that's knowledge. If you're just harping, you know, what you read somewhere or you haven't really critically thought about this, then you're just espousing rhetoric. And we, you know, rhetoric isn't gonna help right now. Um, and being on one side of politics or the other side of politics, this is, this is, a, non, this is a nonpartisan issue. This is a life or death issue for many people. You have to remember that, right? Here's what we know right now, okay? We know that, um, I think her name is Dr. Burks. She wants liberal counts and this is, you know, this isn't me making this up. This is directly out of her mouth. She, she said this last week. She wants liberal counts of COVID diagnosis and death and death rates. Um, and she, she actually was last week on the podium and said, yes, we're counting this very liberally right now. Um, and she's encouraging it. What this is doing, so, so what this is doing is it's leading to the potential for false statistics to be reported. And this is a problem. Because we, we're trying to base intelligent decisions. We're trying to be empowered to make good, intelligent decisions about opening our government or keeping our government closed so that more people don't die unnecessarily. But we're, uh, in a large part, we're doing it. And, and then I'm not saying all the statistics are false, but some of those statistics are definitely false. And this is coming out of her mouth, not mine. We also know that hospitals right now are being incentivized to call it COVID. So hospitals get $13,000 for a COVID patient and they get $39,000 for a COVID death. So there's an incentivization, a government handout incentivization for hospitals to lie. And we've seen in the, in the media and the news, uh, a number of people have started to come out and speak about this, how, yes, this is actually true, how hospitals are just calling it COVID, but not actually testing it for COVID. See, in medicine, there's a standard. And that standard is when somebody is sick, you know, you have a standard of diagnosis and that standard should, should be very, very clear. You also have a standard in, in terms of cause of death. There are standards for, for identifying cause of death and those standards in some cases are being completely ignored. And so people that are dying from different causes of death that might not be COVID related are being called COVID deaths because the hospitals are incentivized to make $39,000. Now, I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong and, and who created all this. I'm just simply saying this is the fact of the matter. These are, these are facts. We can't really argue with these things. This is what's happening, right? So if hospitals are incentivized to lie, right, what does that do to the statistics. It artificially, potentially it artificially inflates them, right? So we get artificial increase and it inflates the statistics artificially. Now, who is relying on these statistics to make decisions about whether we open shut or when we open or when we close? Your governments. Most cases, it's the state governments that are re they're watching the news and they're looking at these numbers and these statistics. Now, if these statistics are artificially inflated, and the governments don't you know don't really adjust for that, then what ends up happening is they could be holding off on opening some places that don't need to be closed and closing some places uh, that don't need to be closed. Um, further bankrupting their economies, further increasing the death rate through suicide and through other means, through other scenarios. So again, if we have artificial statistics and we have governors uh, that are basing their decisions because these statistics are artificial and the reason they're artificial is because the leaders are saying, let's not really be scientific about how we're counting or how we're, or how we're taking consideration about how COVID is diagnosed and who's dying from COVID or who's dying from other things. And because that's coming from the leaders and the hospitals are getting paid, so they're getting a financial incentive to call it this, then again, we're going to get artificial inflation of the stats. And so again, if our governments are, are then taking artificially inflated stats, then everybody's going to get the potential uh, for having either stay at home orders being longer than what they need to be and potential bankruptcy for a number of families. Now I know person, I personally, I know people who are struggling right now. I know many of you will say, and maybe let's poll you guys. How many of you know somebody who have died 
who has died from COVID-19, like confirmed COVID-19, not secondary sequelae, not a heart attack that was called COVID-19, not, not something else, but actually died from COVID-19. I know they exist. I know there are people out there that have. I'm not saying that that hasn't happened. It has. How many of you know somebody who has died from COVID-19? And, and then on the other side of that question is, how many of you know somebody who's this close to financial ruin and bankruptcy, who's blown through their financial savings and their potential life savings um, in a manner to keep their families fed right now. Uh, because one of the things as a byproduct of all this, right, is your stock markets have crashed, another fact, right? So if you, if you were invested in the stock market with your 401k, for example, or with the money, and now you don't have a job and you don't have any means to support yourself and you didn't get some of the government bailout money because that, a lot of that money we know was now given to bigger corporations and not so much to small businesses, and you had a bunch of money in the stock market and you lost half the value of that money overnight and you were relying on that money for your retirement, and now you have to take it out. What, what's left, you have to take it out to feed your family. How many of you are going to suffer from that? And how many of you know somebody in that situation? Because I do. I know people on both sides. I know people who have been hospitalized over COVID. I don't know anybody personally who's died, but I know people who have been hospitalized over it. And I know people who have lost their, their, their life savings. They've lost everything they've worked for in their entire life. And so we've got, we've got a, a scale here. We've got two sides of this. And so I know that if any of you have been you know, watching media and hanging out around some of the social media platforms, there's, there's like two very polarized sides. And, and there's no clear critical thinking, really, in my opinion, by, by both of these sides. Is one side, it's, it's all conspiracy. And then there's the other side that, no, everybody needs to stay at home and trust the government. Well, well we already know the government, how trustworthy is it? In some cases, it's not trustworthy at all. And so I think there's a, there's a realm in the middle where we can come to an intelligent conclusion about what actually needs to happen. I think, I think that, that realm, though, if we are not thinking about these things intelligently, and if you as a citizen, if you as a person are not in contact with your government, with your authorities, and questioning the very things that, that they're saying to you, and questioning why these things are happening versus just staying inside out of fear, I think that's a mistake. I think those of you who just stay inside out of fear and don't actually question, don't get educated, that's a mistake. And I think those of you who um, are running out and, and uh, in public and, uh, and starting you know, mass scale, uh, mass scale, right? No, no, well, there's nobody really starting riots. I think the people that are out in public, most of them are trying to do safe distancing. Some are not. And, and so again, I think there, again, there's two sides to this. So where are you at? Because right now, if you want to maintain your health, which is what my show is all about, I don't like to get political. I don't like to, to get into governmental things. Um, however, Part of maintaining your health right now is how well we get through this crisis, right? And I've given you a lot of tips here in the last several months about vitamins, about minerals, about exercise and sunshine and, you know, turning off the media uh, because, because of the scares. But we're at a point now where if we don't take critical responsibility, get educated, empower ourselves to make better decisions, then we're going to end up with a bigger problem than a pandemic, we're going to end up with a nation that's potentially bankrupt. And a lot of people are going to die as a result of that outcome. So I don't want to see that happen to any of you. So I challenge everyone listening tonight to step up with your critical brain. It's what we have been teaching you here this entire time through Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain Show. What do I teach you? I don't just tell you take a vitamin or take a supplement. I teach you every week. I teach you how the vitamin works. I teach you what the symptoms, what the side effects, what the foods are. I teach you how to be a critical thinker around nutrition. Now I'm asking you to be a critical thinker about what's going on in the world. And you need to have your voice heard. You need to stand up and make sure that your voice is heard. Quit arguing with each other on social media and get a hold of your senator. Get a hold of your representative and make the power of your voice be heard. But do so with critical thinking and don't do it out of fear. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.